we're back with Brendan Proust here to talk about spaces and reservations. Hello, Sarah. Thank you for having me back. Oh, my pleasure. Now, when were you last here? Um, it was probably two weeks out from our Vancouver premiere, which was May 20th, so it had been like the middle of May. Okay. And I'm sorry I didn't make it to your screening. I felt so bad. I, I just got so tired. I, I know. We all get tired. I get tired <laughs> of people not coming to my screening. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I have news for you to share so okay. that, that'll be relevant to people who missed it. Okay, which is? Well, the news is basically if you missed your chance to see the movie in Vancouver or Calgary or wherever, um, we are offering a private screen of the film online um, by request. So if you email spacesfilm at gmail.com okay. and just say, hey, Brendan, I missed it. I really want to see the movie. Um, we'll send you a link to a private screener and a password. And all we ask is that people just post their comment or their reaction and their review of the film somewhere online okay. where other people can be inspired to check it out. Okay, so. definitely. And, and I mean, yeah, the romance thing is a bit sensitive. So I'll see it as soon as I feel I, psychologically able. Believe me, I feel you. <laughs> I really feel you. So let, now you you... So last time you were here, you talked about the film. It was screening. You just made it. You'd worked very hard to make it, very diligently. I remember being very impressed by the amount of work you put into it. So just review for us a synopsis of the film. Well, basically, uh, Spaces and Reservations is a very intimate, very realistic, performance-intensive relationship drama about this young couple that begins to suffer a malaise in their relationship and, and as they grow apart, become interested in other people and are torn apart the, by the experience of being unfaithful to each other. Um, so it's a movie. It's a, my third micro-budget feature film that I made uh, in between semesters at film school um, with just a group of fledgling professional actors and uh, uh, my peers from film school uh, over the course of uh, 16 days. Mm-hmm. And if I recall from the trailer, I, I remember feeling it was like really well done. Um, and I think people agreed, right, that saw it. It got a good response from the people that saw it. That was one of the most incredible things about our Cross Canada journey is that, you know, one of the things I'm interested in as a filmmaker, though it's not like a number one priority for me, is are people who are not like film people able to you know, engage with this in the same way that they would with a, you know, a commercial film that they go see at the multiplex? Um, and across the board, people are just saying the only difference between spaces and reservations and a commercial movie that I see is the content. It's not how it looks. It's not how it sounds. It's what kind of movie it is. And to me, that was a tremendous, tremendous victory Mm -hmm. because then they're engaging with what the movie is about and not, you know, you know, the the form and the shape that it's taking. Yeah. And we we talked about this before that it seemed to strike a chord with people, like a common experience of the complexity of love and eroticism and all of those things that stress us out. And it was interesting too. And then it's mentioned here in this article um, in beat root magazine of you're, you're kind of this de facto relationship guy in a way. Now, would you say that's, that's true? Like, well, I, I, I don't know. Like, I, I think like my, I make films that are about very common experiences to people because when I experience them, I feel very lonely. I feel like very by myself and that no one is experiencing them. So I think I make things that are about a very common and a very universal thing. And I make them in a, I think a very realistic and uncontrived sort of way. And so that people kind of go, this is the person who's, you know, I hope that eventually people will feel like this person is making films about my experiences Mm -hmm. from within my culture. And these are things that I can relate to. Because to me, like the worst thing about art and the worst thing about commercial cinema is you go and you go like, where is my life and where is my experience supposed to be hiding in this? Um, And so Joel Dryden is one of the film editors at Beatroot or is the film editor said to me like, yeah, I mean, you're really speaking to these you know, universal generational things that are very particular to our time and place. Mm-hmm. So I hope to be that person. I, I yeah. don't know. Like, <laughs> but I mean, are people, people are coming to you with their relationship stories, essentially. Totally. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, I start making the movie from a place of being very lonely. And by the end of the tour, I go, you know, like everyone, everyone deals with this mm-hmm. and everyone feels the same way that you do for their large part. So yeah, definitely. I think people go like, you got my relationship exactly as I remembered it. Mm-hmm. You captured this experience exactly the way I felt it when I did. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I guess it's very affirming as a filmmaker to know that you've portrayed it you know, truthfully mm-hmm. and faithfully. So based on your own experience that led to the film and based on what people have said after seeing the film, what's your, and I can't remember if we talked about this before, but what's your take on fidelity and monogamy now? Oh my God, this is such a topic for me right now. You yeah. have no idea. Um, 
basically, you know, I think we live in a in a highly individualized and very like predatorily self interested culture that you know I think by you know quite rightly teaches you to look out for your own interests first all the all the time. But the thing about being in a relationship is that it really like it demands that you have like an extraordinary degree of selflessness that you really are invested and engaged in, in the other person while at the same time being like very, very self-aware. And these are difficult things to balance. And, you know, Spaces and Reservations is especially a film about young people. And, uh, you know, I've recently gone through an experience that harkens back to this nightmare that is the two experiences that I've, that inspired Spaces. And basically what people say to me is they say, this is a common thing for young people because they're figuring themselves out they don't know how to be honest with themselves. They don't have the tools with which to communicate effectively with others. And, you know, the relationships are just, you know, you know, they're doomed to screw it up. I don't know if you feel yeah, that way. Well, I, I, I don't mean, know if, if well, I'm quite that cynical. Well, I think I'm in my 40s now. So I'd say in my 20s, right? Like you, yeah, you have shorter relationship cycles, essentially. Yeah. Right? And as you get older, I mean, if you develop somewhat normalcy you tend to have longer relationships but i think you're speaking to the generational thing i mean we're living in a society where we have so much choice and this impression of constant options so it's like maybe there's something better around the next corner and you know in, oh in, God, in previous yeah. history it was like there's a person in your village and and that's it right now it's like this endless choice so people always feel like they need a foot out the door and we're, we're now even wondering are we monogamous or are we needing to have open relationships and yeah. neither one seems frankly that good to me yeah I, it's tough and it's an interesting to talk about in vancouver which is you know purportedly a very like culturally progressive city that you know is all about these open relationships and sexual liberalization and, and the notion that you could have multiple partners and and that the the value of your relationships isn't diminished by the multiplicity of them and you know, I, I'm not a sociologist, like, I, I can't, but what I do know, like, personally, is the thing that I value about being in a relationship is feeling unique and feeling special and looking across to another person and know that, you know, what we're sharing is not something that they share with someone else, because mm -hmm. that makes me feel r really special, and I think it's a hard thing in this world to feel unique and, and to feel special, and, you know, not everybody wants the same thing, I get that, and I, but I think, you know, it's so important to be not uh sorry honest with people um about what you do want and where you're at and i'm sorry i'm starting to rant because yeah no it's, it's a just big on topic. my mind i think yeah. you should write a book i think you should write a book about you know this based on your experience as you collect more experiences i guess one thing i wanted to talk about and um you know your dedication to taking this on a sort of an indie well not sort of like an indie tour across the country and how that went, and and then you came back quite exhausted. Yeah, and I mean the you know the story is not just that I was exhausted, truthfully, um, but that I had an awful experience when I got back, and it was very difficult for me to deal with. But I mean the film tour is, it was an incredibly rewarding experience, and it was a huge learning experience. Um, and it's wonderful to see this country because this country is amazing. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I mean, it was really difficult, and it was. It's not something that I would do again or I would recommend others do again because <laughs> DIY audience building for uh, a movie that is for like a very particular group of young people who are so inundated with, you know, cultural demands of all kinds who are, you know, not active consumers. They're not active politically. Like it, it's so hard to engage them. And it's, you know, like a small little project like this really needs them not just to show up to a theater even – but to engage with a project for a duration. And uh, I, I just found DIY audience building for that age, particularly in cinema, I, I, I really don't know if you can do that without, mm -hmm. you know, a healthy dose of like middlemen, you know, m the media and uh, film critics and festivals and things like that to, to sway people in your direction. Mm -hmm. So when you did connect with people, it was great, but getting people out was like, it's kind of, it sounds like it's not the best option for promoting your film. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, like when it worked and when you did manage a connection with people, I mean, I think like the movie speaks for itself. It the the connect people's reactions to the movie spoke for themselves. And I, I just felt like the whole way along, if I could just get people in the theater to watch it and be open to the experience, 
they would be really moved mm-hmm. and they would be really surprised because people don't know there are alternatives for film out there that movies are being made in their community and mm-hmm. they're not just coming from the netherworld that is Hollywood or wherever, you know? Um, but yeah, it's, it's, you know, we didn't succeed mm-hmm. and, you know, I wouldn't recommend it. I wouldn't do it again. Yeah. I, you know, it made me laugh a bit because I did a, a tour, an indie tour with a band, you know, I mean, lots of people do, but across Canada in the year 2000 and I spent so much money and I came back broke, exhausted, ended up in the psych ward. Like it can just, like, it can just ruin you. Right. It's just such a brutal haul. So I, I feel your pain, you know. Oh man, I'm so glad you can relate to <laughs> this experience, especially being in the psych ward. Yeah. <laughs> that makes total sense to me. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, when you were here last, you were like, mm, I don't want to put it into the film festivals, but it sounds like people encouraged you to do so. Yeah, I spoke to a couple of people on the way who are, you know, industry savvy enough, and they were kind of going, I understand why you're concerned about sending this to a film festival because of the length and because it's very low concept and there's no names in it, essentially. Um, but they said, I, I wouldn't let the ship sail on it because I have seen this kind of movie at a film festival. And although it's really rare, and I mean, submitting to film festivals is like playing the lottery. They said it might be worth playing the lottery mm-hmm. if I wanted to do the American side of things because we talked about doing a tour down the California coast in a similar fashion. And, you know, I'm just like, I'm out of money. I got to mm-hmm. get back to my job. I have another project that I want to write. And uh, I don't know. You just can't, you can't keep doing that, mm-hmm. especially when we had you know, as little success as we did mm. in the markets where I didn't have an audience already built for me. Right. Yeah. But, you know, if anyone can do it in terms of getting it out to the film festival, it's you, because I think, you know, you're very passionate, you're a very hard worker. And, and so when you regain your energy, you might have a second win for this film, but I know you're also very excited to move on to next projects. And I really see a very successful future for you because of your passion and your skill in making films.